Good morning and welcome to the regular meeting for City Council for Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. And the meeting announcements, all council meetings are live streamed on the city's website. Will the clerk please take the roll call? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Coghill. Ms. Gross. Here. Mr. Kraus. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mrs. Strasburger. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mrs. Kilsmith, President. Here. Six members present. Thank you. As we join from our remote locations and in person, please rise if you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And while we're standing for a moment of silence, please give uh, your thoughts to the family of uh, State Representative Tony DeLuca. Thank you. Okay. You may be seated. Thank you. And our next order of business is to amend the agenda. Is there a motion to amend the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Amend is, the agenda is amended. And our next order of business is proclamations, and we have two to be presented, one from Councilwoman Gross and one from myself and Controller Lamb. We're going to start, begin with Controller Lamb. Wherever you want to go, it's up to you. Good morning. Uh, I know it's not often that you see me here, um, <laughs> but today is a very rare day. Uh, we're celebrating 100 years of service to the city of Pittsburgh um, in two individuals who this year celebrate 50 years working working uh, for the city. Um, and uh, you know, when I, when I first became the controller, even before in those months leading up to taking office, I was ambivalent about what I was going to find there um, and, and how we were going to effectuate the kind of change that we. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, so we're celebrating again 100 years uh, of city service. When I, when I started in the controller's office, I was a little ambivalent about what I was going to find there and, and how we were going to make the kind of changes that we needed to make and do the kind of things we needed to do. I will tell you that I was very pleasantly surprised to find the level of historic uh, perspective, the level of institutional knowledge existed in the office at that time. And that is demonstrated today by two individuals that we're honoring um, and, and the work that they do. They come to work every day now for 50 years, uh, doing a great job for the city of Pittsburgh and doing the work that so many in this building and around the various facilities in this city do every day, uh, dedicated to uh, the citizens of this town, dedicated to the work that they do, and, and do a wonderful job for us all over Pittsburgh. Um, but let me talk about these two individuals. I'm going to talk about one first. We, we have one that we're going to read and adopt because she's not here. Um, Mary Ann Bond uh, started in our office in 1972, in, actually this month, October of 72, after graduating Sacred Heart High School, um, the daughter of Irish immigrants. Uh, she came here, uh, she, she went to work, and she now serves as our chief administrative officer. Um, she's the person that basically knows who gets paid, <laughs> how they get paid, uh, you know, they, making sure that we do that job accurately, making sure that the operations of the city's financial systems uh, are able to do the work that we needed to do, have the proper checks and balances in the systems that we do. Mary Ann wouldn't come up today. Um, she's a little shy, uh, so, but I know she's watching on TV right now. Um, but, but for 50 years, she has done incredible work for us here in the city of Pittsburgh uh, in making sure that our systems continue to operate, our financial systems continue to operate, and we continue to get our vendors paid on time and that our contracts are properly complied with. Um, the, other, the other individual we're going to uh, acknowledge, I'm going to ask him to come on up here. Uh, he's here, and uh, Ray, bring your, bring your crew up here, please. Come on up. Anyone who's here with Ray, come on up.
Anybody who's ever done any work with the city of Pittsburgh knows Ray Jablonowski, um, for good or bad. <laughs> Jay, uh, Ray, is, Ray is a guy who is a stickler. Um, he takes his job very seriously. He, he makes sure that city residents are, being, are, being, are not being cheated. He makes sure that city residents are getting everything that they are required to get on every contract. Uh, cons particularly construction contracts that come to the city. Um, he has sometimes, sometimes raised the ire of some of our, our vendors, um, but that's only because he's doing his job. He does his job honestly, he does it with passion, um, and, and every day he's making sure that our citizens are getting their dollars worth in the work that gets done around this city. So let me just read uh, this very quickly. Whereas Raymond Ray Jablonowski son of Catherine Anthony Jablonowski, has lived in Greenfield, in the Greenfield neighborhood since the age of five, attended the Greenfield School, St. Rosalia School, Central Catholic High School, the University of Pittsburgh, where he earned a degree in civil engineering. And whereas after graduating from high school and before his first year at Pitt, Raymond worked as a construction inspector for the city of Pittsburgh. In July of 1972, he began working for the controller's office, where he continues today as the controller's engineer. With great tenacity, he monitors bills for city work and ensures that they are completely correctly and according to the standards in the contracts. And whereas Ray has worked for city controllers John McGrady, Tom, Thomas Flaherty, and Michael Lamb to provide independent and objective oversight to protect city dollars from waste, fraud, and abuse. And whereas a person's heritage and neighborhood can become a very important part of who they are which is notable in Mr. Jablonowski's work, ethic, and charitable work. He generally supports many charities, including BOLD, the Blind Outdoor Leisure Development, an organization that strives to include all persons, regardless of vision ability, in outdoor and leisure activities, the Helen Keller Foundation, CARE, the Catholic Alumni Club, and Brothers Brother Foundation. And whereas Mr. Jablonowski enjoys participating in sports and activities, Rather than be a spectator, his many passions are hiking, biking, running, dancing, playing tennis, volleyball, and pickleball, but enjoys golf most of all, playing with friends whenever he can. And whereas his perseverance exemplifies his dedication towards improving the quality of life for all people in the city of Pittsburgh, now therefore be it resolved that the council of the city of Pittsburgh and the city controller do hereby recognize and honor the 50 years of important work and dedicated contribution of Ray Jablonowski, and be it further resolved that Council and the City of Pittsburgh, Council of the City of Pittsburgh and the City Controller do hereby declare today, Tuesday, October 11th, 2022, to be Ray Jablonowski Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Can I have a motion to approve? And, can I have a motion to approve in a second? Second. All in favor? As much as I hate to do this to you, I'm going to have Ray say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank all my friends for being here, many of which I didn't know were going to be here, including some of my blind friends. I'm, I'm really grateful that they showed up. Now, when I thought about what I was going to say today, I thought, who should I thank? Well. The number one person is my parents, my, my dad, and my mom. I think my dad instilled in me the value of work. He never gave me anything. Just to give an example, I worked, which helped me make it through 50 years. I worked at Shenley Stables for 50 cents an hour. I worked as a vendor at Forbes Field selling ice cream in April when it was freezing out. One guy, <laughs> One guy bought an ice cream for me. He said, look, I felt sorry for you. <laughs> so, you know, and then my, you know, my dad just had this idea. You earn your money. He never gave me anything. Dad, thank you so much for, for teaching me that lesson. And my favorite thing that my dad ever did was the time that he drove me out to South Park, and I was selling ice balls at the county fair for a penny a piece. I remember working all day. I sold like 280 
ice balls. I made $2.80, but I succumbed. I smelled the barbecue chicken, and I, I couldn't help it. I just had to have a barbecue chicken dinner. There went $2.30. <laughs> My dad picked me up at 7 o'clock at night. I made 60 cents for that whole day. But those things, those experiences that my dad made me go through made it like a cakewalk. You know, I, I don't know, this job, it just seems, after those experiences, it just seems so easy for me. You know, I could work every day. I love working. So, you know, and I want to thank especially some of the people that helped mold my character, like the Christian brothers at Central Catholic, the nuns from the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Hey, thank you for what you, the character that you, that you molded into me. You made me a good Christian person, and I'm forever grateful. I want to thank all the controllers. Uh, John McGrady, I worked for him. I worked for Tom Flaherty for many, many years. And they left out one guy, Tony Procora. He became the controller. Then Mike Lamb. Now, let me talk about my relationship with Mike Lamb for a second, because he's here. <laughs> This is the only chance I get. <laughs> no, me and Mike really share the same philosophy, the same work philosophy, and that is that you check people's work over and you're always nice to them. He may not believe it, but I really try hard to be nice to people. You know, it's, <laughs> and we share that same, you know, my, my, my goals are to work with people, be nice to everybody, and show them what's wrong in a nice way, and hopefully they don't get mad at you. So I don't have anybody that wants to kill me, so hey, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> the other thing I want to share with you, a couple of my work philosophies that's made me through these 50 years. And I look at it this way. A hard day's work is its own reward. Yes. Think about that. A hard day's work is its own reward. When I come to work and work hard every day, the time goes fast, I feel good about myself, I feel happy when I go home, I feel like I earn my money. So the second thing is that I think about, which got me through these 50 years, is you know, I play tennis, so what's that have to do with me working for the city? Well, it's this, it's the same and in, in true in life as in playing tennis and working for the city. Those who serve well seldom lose. That's a real, real important saying. And I've always tried to live by that motto. Yes. To serve people, not to, not to come down and, and criticize them or be rude, but to help people and be there with them and show them what's wrong and, and be of service to people. So I think that's, I wanted to share that with you because I think that's really carried me well through these 50 years. So the last thing I, I wish, Mayor Ganey was here because I wanted to make a deal with him, okay? I wanted to say, let's make a deal. I've been here 50 years. Your I wonder how many more years do I have to go before maybe I could get a little alleyway named after me? <laughs> maybe a little street. I was thinking of like Ray Jab Way. How about, how about we make a deal, Mr. Ganey? How about like 10 more years or five more years? And I get a little, there's got to be some new development somewhere. <laughs> Can I get like a Ray Jab way somewhere? <laughs> but, but, you know, thank you so much for being here. I'm really fa fantastically enthusiastic about working. I love coming to work, and I'm going to continue. I'm still going strong, and I'm not stopping. Good for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I, you know, I've, I've, I'm just on behalf of, um, I know I've talked to a number of the vendors in the city who work with Ray, and they would agree with naming an alley or something after him. I think they would call it PIA Way. But, um, <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, uh, but he does a phenomenal job uh, for us uh, in the office. We have a second resolution that I think is going to be read into the record for yeah. Marianne Bond. Um, as I said, thankfully, she's a little more shy than Ray. Um, so, uh, uh, I think so, like Pittsburgh is in you. the back. They might need yeah. a new. What's that? Like Pittsburgh's in the back. They might need a new advocate. Uh, there you go. So there he likes to bike. That's right. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.
photo. Hey, Debra, Stay here for the photo. Gotta get a picture, man. Do all the council want to come forward for the photo? Council? Oh. Do you want to come you forward for the photo? You want us up there too? Everyone, please stay. We're going to take a photo with the members of council and controller Liam. Do you want to join us, Rachel? Eisler and who's? Do you want to join us? Yeah. And I can't remember his name. What's it? Hey. Andrew, Andrew, get in the photo. I'm taking the We have the clerk takes it. Thank you. Congratulations. Controller, did you want to say anything about the second proclamation? Controller, did you want to say something about Marianne? No, we, you know, I've, I've already mentioned, but uh, we do have a second proclamation also acknowledging the 50 years of Marianne Bond and uh, the great work that she does, which is going to be right into the record. So, okay. Thank, you. You okay. Thank, Thank you. We have another proclamation to be presented. Councilwoman Gross, whenever you're ready. Bobby, I got you. We only have one, one was read into the record, one that's presented. You, you have yours now. What do you think of the girl who's running for control? No, the girl who's running for court. While we're waiting for everyone to get settled, um, I'm very pleased today to be able to present a proclamation for Bike Pittsburgh's 20 years of service to the city of Pittsburgh. We look forward to it being 50. Um, if everyone from Bike Pittsburgh can come up to the front. I've been told that there are times when more half of the Bike Pittsburgh membership has been residents of District 7. I'm not sure that's still true. Um, now that the membership has grown, come all the way up. You want to pick somebody? You can come all the way up close to the podium because that way you're in the camp. The cameras are right up next to the clock over there, so that's where they are. Um, but Bike Pittsburgh's membership has spread across the city and has grown, so I don't know where that number stands. But I've been proud to be able to. Um, work with so many enthusiastic members of Bike Pittsburgh over the years. Um, and so today we congratulate them. Whereas Bike Pittsburgh's mission is to improve quality of life and reduce the harmful effects of car dependence on our communities by transforming our streets so that biking and walking can be commonplace for all Pittsburghers. And whereas Bike Pittsburgh has raised significant awareness about how safe biking and walking help address some of the biggest challenges of our time, including equity, affordability, accessibility, air quality, climate change, public health, and traffic violence. And whereas Bike Pittsburgh has led the local movement for complete streets, which is transforming how the city of Pittsburgh thinks about plans for and designs its built environment to promote walkable, bikeable communities and safety for all Pittsburghers. Whereas in 2022, Bike Pittsburgh is celebrating 20 years of remarkable achievements, including completing the fleet of bike racks on buses. That was so long ago, I'm having a flashback. <laughs> Publishing eight editions of the official Bike Pittsburgh map, teaching countless Pittsburghers of all ages how to safely ride bikes, and helping the city of Pittsburgh install thousands of bike racks and over 100 miles of bikeways. Whereas Bike Pittsburgh focuses attention on equity issues related to the built environment and cycling through their transportation justice learning series and women in non-binary biking program. And whereas with Pedal Pittsburgh and Open Streets Pittsburgh, 
Bike Pittsburgh produces some of the city's most popular events, show, um, allowing residents and visitors alike to bike and walk the unique and beautiful neighborhoods of Pittsburgh while significantly contributing to the local economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby congratulate Bike Pittsburgh on its two decades of excellent work on behalf of people who bike and walk in the City of Pittsburgh. And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare October 4th, 2022 as Bike Pittsburgh Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Can I have a motion to approve in a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Proclamation is approved. That's Congratulations. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Scott, I'm the executive director and co-founder of Bike Pittsburgh. Um, where's my way named after? <laughs> okay. I, I'm so thrilled to be here. I wanna thank my staff, uh, some of whom are up here today. Eric, who's worked so tire tirelessly uh, on our advocacy initiatives to get those bike lanes and, and bike racks in Pittsburgh, completing the fleet of buses with bike racks. Uh, making it so much easier for people to choose getting around by bike. Uh, and, and really, you know, I want to thank my board. They've been there every step of the way, providing leadership. And I want to thank council. So council, you've, you've helped appropriate, uh, you know, a lot of money towards saving people's lives and making our air quality better and keeping hard earned money in people's wallets uh, because it's, there's so few things that you can invest in that result in so much uh, quality, quality of life improvements for our city. Safety, climate change, air quality, affordability, um, the list goes on and you're, and you're helping uh, by, by voting for bills that provide um, safer passages for people, for budgets that allocate dollars to these things. So, Thank you so much. Um, I really hope I'm not here for 50 years <laughs> besides in the audience for it, um, but it's been, it's been a, a really great, it's been a, it's been a hell of a ride, and uh, thank you so much for honoring us, Councilwoman, um, and all of you. Thank you. All members, please join us for the photo. This smells like it came from a biking school. <laughs> you know how I used to run drive it down Robinson Street on Fifth Avenue? Is that how you went? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dan told me not to. <laughs> That's the advice of my attorney. <laughs> and we have one to be read into the record. Or we have two to be read into the record. I apologize for Councilman Coghill and myself, Madam Clerk. Councilman President Smith presents, be it further, res be it further resolved, that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh and City Controller does hereby declare Tuesday, October 11th, 2022, to be Mary Ann Bond Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Can we read them both? Yes. And, and Councilman Coghill presents, be it further resolved, that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Thursday, October 13th, 2022 to be Pittsburgh Hispanic Development Corporation Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Is there a motion to approve both proclamations in a second? So moved. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Proclamations are approved. And that moves us on to our next order of business, which is public comment. Oh. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comments are limited. 
Members. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are or may be before city council. Profanity and threats will not be permitted. May we have the first registered speaker, and I have the, and please state your name and neighborhood for the record. You have three minutes to speak, and the first registered speaker is Dr. Ronald Lynn Miller. Dr. Miller, good morning. Dr. Ronald Lynn Miller, Bill Suber. I also have a residence in Ramstein, uh, Deutschland. Um, I'm an, uh, opposed to the RPDP Republican Party Democratic Party frame. I'm a Global Intelligence Society U.S. National Candidate for President 2024. My primary tell text is 412-969-7997. Regarding Resolution 2022-0768, Warrington Recreation Center upgrade, I think that the million dollars plus should be used um, for the city, city county building, CCB, security sensors, suits, and um, scanner salary upgrades. Concerns of Pittsburgh City Council are security and diversity. Citizens, consider two variations, security of security and diversity of security. Variation one, security of security. The uh, security of the city county building, CCB, in the council room, ZR, is insecurity. The scanning devices in the CCB entry do not detect negative biologicals, chemicals, and radiologicals, which means they can come in this door. The security of the scanners, the first CCB CR security line for us, uh, is insecure. The scanners in the most dangerous job in the uh, city county building uh, must be equipped, in my view, with one uh, suits um, that scan for screen out biological, chemical, and uh, nuclear agents, and two um, with sensor devices that detect dangerous biologicals, chemicals, and radiologicals. I recommend that you contact Dr. Omo Wanmi Sadiq. She's a Nigerian brilliant chemist and she has invented such sensors. Um, variation two, diversity of security. The uh, racial ethnic diversity of the security scanners, in my view, is anti-diversity. 90% or more of the CCP uh, security scanners are of black African descent, which is racist because it excludes U.S. Americans of native, Latin, and Asian descent, and racist because it includes more black Americans in the most dangerous jobs. That is a big surprise, isn't it? Solutions which I think are imperatives. One, add increases to the salaries of existing black African American scanners, and two, add, subtracting no one, add scanners who are of Latin, native, and Asian American descent. Um, you, you talk a great deal about diversity and the importance of diversity and security. It runs through so much of what the Democratic Party in this city does, but your actions are really anti-diversity on this security matter. That means that it's a lie. All right, thank you. Our next registered speaker is Ralph L. Williams. Ralph L. Williams. Do we have anyone online? Oh, no. Thank you. The reason I'm here to speak today is because I know that the city has a fear problem. Um, I want to make a few suggestions for you. First of all, you need to call the State Game Commission. What you do is you ask them if they can, if you guys can get involved in a control hunt. What that does, Mount Lebanon has done this, Fox Chapel has done this, and many other communities have done this control hunt. You'll close up one of the parks for a weekend and have hunters come in and either use bow and arrow or rifle, whichever you choose. But you need to consult with the state game uh, people before you do this. Now, what my suggestion is, is that um, uh, each hunter be allowed to, to uh, kill two deers, but they must donate one to the city, which can be, the meat can be smoked at a, a taxidermy place or a butcher and be donated to the local food banks, homeless shelters, and or the jail. Uh, and that will save everybody money on everything as far as food goes for the food banks and also a donation. You can take the deer horns from the buck that, that are harvested. And what you can do is you can auction them off and you can give the money to charity. All right, these are some suggestions that can help you with your deer issue. All right, number two, uh, Councilman Burgess, I was asked, I want to ask you a question. 
that is as to whether or not you've got the funding to fix the road that goes up into the old Leamington home. I'm part of the advisory council for East Liberty Family Health Care Center, and I want to know if the road's being fixed so that the bus, the Port Authority bus, can get up into that hill up there. You were at the ribbon cutting as I was, and I talked to Mayor Ganey, and he said something was supposed to be done. I haven't been there for a while. I want to ask you, has anything been accomplished to get that road fixed so that the bus can go up there to help the senior citizens and the patients of East Liberty Family Health Care Center? Thirdly, I want to talk to you, Mr. Burgess, as well. You were on the board of the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh. There are issues going on in my building that the board, that the management refuses to do anything about. I was trying to speak to Castor Binion in person at that same ribbon cutting that you were at. He refused to talk to me, refused to even listen to anything I had to say. We have issues in my building where I live. I live at the Military Plaza. I've spoken with Mr. Bruce Krause several times in regards to the situations in the building. This needs to be taken care of, Mr. Burgess, and I know you're on the board, and I know that the mayor's wife is on the board as well. You guys need to know what's going on in Calatiri Plaza. There's a lot of stuff in there, people causing problems. My wife has been physically assaulted twice. I've had to call the police numerous times for numerous things. Nobody gets evicted, and it's very sad that this has to go on. I cannot move because my mom lives with me in the same building, and I have to watch over my mom. So I'm asking you to please do something about this now because if not, it's going to get worse and worse. I'd like something to be done by the end of the year. Thank you for letting me speak today. Have a great one. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. And the next speaker is— Madam President, I usually don't say much in public comment, but he said something that's not true, so I need to at least correct the record. We do have a Mrs. Ganey on the Housing Authority Board, but that Mrs. Ganey is not the mayor's wife. Thank you for that clarification. And John Renahan? Renahan? I'm sorry. Good morning. Hello. My name is John Hanrahan. I live at 434 Katoma Street. I am a proud resident of Fine View in Council District 1, and I am a member of the Board of Directors of the Fine View Citizens Council. I am here to speak in a personal capacity in opposition to Resolution 804, the Quality of Life Policing Bill. Now, to the casual news consumer, which is to say most of us, it might seem like City Council is finally making unmowed lawns and trash-strewn sidewalks a ticketable offense. From WPXI, Pittsburgh City Council considers ticketing people for trash, high weeds, and KDKA, Pittsburghers could soon pay up if they don't clean up. Finally, right? Well, under current city code, Chapter 609 specifically, it is already a ticketable offense to leave garbage out on the sidewalk or to let your lawn go wild. You can be fined by the Bureau of Environmental Services for an untamed lawn, and under existing city code, the city can even mow the lawn for you and charge you for the work. In other words, what's being reported as news is not what's new. What really seems to be the point of Resolution 804 is who is doing the enforcement and how quickly. As this bill would have it, if you let your lawn grow unchecked, it's the Pittsburgh police that will confront you and they'll ticket you on the spot. So let me be clear. Resolution 804 is a bill to increase the power of the Pittsburgh police. This is quality of life policing and quality of life policing is broken windows policing. Council, what's to stop this quality of life solution from itself becoming a quality of life problem? For example, who's to say that this won't be weaponized by the real estate industry to harass and displace poor and working class people? This bill is ripe for abuse. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And that exhausts our list of registered speakers. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address City Council? Please approach the podium. Thank you. Thank My you. name is Les Ludwig. 
6589 Rosemore Street in Squirrel Hill. I come this morning as a very troubled citizen of this community because I've worked hard and long since God knows when, 20, 30 years of coming to meetings, trying to find a way to raise the amount of non-tax revenue so that there's less to be taken from your pockets. And I succeeded. As you're probably aware, that there's an invoice for $175,000 waiting for, I don't know what kind of approvals needed for me to get paid for ideas that were submitted as far back as 2003 and before. You're not living up to it. Democracy is failing. How many people are here to come and contribute ideas? I made it a point that I should do what others have chosen not to do because you're discouraging them from playing a part in what democracy is supposed to be. Am I going to be paid? No. Or am I going to be played with? So I decided to come down and make my position known. There's another 30 or 40 potential million dollars at stake here. I know where it is, potentially. Do you want to know? Then pay the first bill now. Otherwise, go to blazes. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Oh, by the way. Next, your, the your weeds, time's expired. Next the speaker, weeds please. Got high enough to Next speaker, please. A ticket on my home. Next, thank you, Mr. Ludwig. Next speaker, please. Seeing no further speakers, are there no further speakers? Good afternoon. Good Excuse afternoon. me. My name is Flora Williams, and I'm a resident at uh, 715 Mercer Street, K. Leroy Irvis Towers, and I'm here wanting to see if we can pass a law to protect our seniors. It's no use for us to go to the people that own the building because they flatly uh, uh, refuse to help get security in the buildings. But most of us, when we moved in, we signed our leases. It was security included. If it's not made into a law, we are going to be lost which they will be forced, the law will force them to protect the seniors. Our elected officials should be held accountable to protect the elderly who gave their all to live a peaceful life at the end. We deserve to have our peace until we reach our end. For one day, they too, the officials and every one of us will be an elderly one day, and I hope they don't have to search for peace all over again. Now, the next thing we need, our buses that come into town are very scarce and limited. We need to be able to get down here. A few, I took a video of me walking down the hill to get here, and all the uh, uh, destruction, construction that was all in the way, but there's some of those men were kind enough to help us to walk down safely to get here. It is no use for the money that has been given to us to, re, re, uh, to help build this city back up again is not used 
for this elderly at all. Thank you very much. Provide an update on that after the end of the comments, public comments. My name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live at 715 Mercer Street. That's Katie where Irvis tires up at the top of the Bedford. I came today to start off telling you how pleased I am with the teachers and the principal up at Miller African American School. My grandchildren go there. I walked them to school and you have the principal and staff that welcomed them. They were a little bit uh, uneasy because it was a different school. But when the principal saw, saw them and smiled at them, both of them smiled. And the babies, they take each child as they come and they say something directly to them. This is what um, I want you to understand, that these children are just children and we are their role models. We are to teach them. That's how I start bringing my children. And my grandchild, the oldest one is 21 years old. Went to, was in college, has a job. She now went to a job corps. But I used to bring her here as a baby. Furlough, I remember him. Because sometimes she would be da, 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 and he would just be smiling at the baby. I want you to understand that I am fighting for my grandchildren to be able to come down here and speak and not be insulted by Mr. Burgess, who said that my grandchild, who five years old, had no business speaking, when asked, and I have to say about our councilwoman, stayed away four months, come back with a baby that sat in her lap. We were not told by the president at that time that while she was out, they just kept saying, excuse the absent members. But if you read your book, it says it's, you're supposed to explain why. Also, you have where O'Connor brought his baby when he did proclamation. The woman from Children Youth Service, a supervisor, said, well, what was all that? And I'm saying this, if you can, if you're white babies, you understand they're white, and my little black baby can be talked about because she came down here. They say, bring up a child and they will will follow these ways. For years, she's watched city council and she knows that we come down here and speak. I have a picture that I didn't bring today. Whereas when Cross was hollering, when I turned my head and he was hollering, hollering at me, they said, oh, he's hollering at grandma. I got a picture of her when she was about two years old, almost two, crying. And welcome, Mr. Cross. You're supposed to be here. You were out there in the office talking. You know what? You, stay, you don't come in like you're supposed to. I go over to county council, there's 12 of them, and they start at 5 o'clock on the dot. When they give proclamations, they give a proclamation, may have, they may have 50, but they're, they're not given time to speak as long as they want. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, are there any further speakers wishing to address city council? Bernadette? <coughs> Good morning, Bernadette. Good morning. Praise, praise, praise. Two weeks ago, my daughter was here, Reverend Burgess. You welcomed her as the young person. I've made a complete, complete. Uh, my older kids are all in their 30s. They fought, they came down and they spoke at tender ages for civilian review board. They fought in, at school board for when Gigliotti tried to go back to segregated neighborhoods. And this, and my daughter being my youngest, I said, your, your, your ancestors fought for their freedom, fought for the right to vote, fought for the right to speak. Within hours of my daughter speaking, they brought in a new principal who knew the kids, who knew the building. They opened up two entrances. They wiped their tardy, attendance completely clean. They thanked us, they thanked us for, and I'm still fighting, for recycled x-ray machines. Not all kids, but some kids' book bags, there should be hazmat signs on them. It now takes 15 minutes 
for the students to go through. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony Coghill. He came out of his way on Saturday to meet me up at Dead Man's Curve at Bostead and Broadway. It's a blind spot. I recorded it. That was a Saturday. Wait till I record it during rush hour traffic. Cars are not stopping, trolleys are not stopping. There just happened to be a police officer there who said, by the way, that you guys don't listen to them. He said, before I could say it, you guys need one of those pedestrian cross lights. Yes, we do. Um, real quick, the stiletto heel trap and the bumper ride at the top of Fallowfield and Broadway, let's recycle books, recycle those cobblestones and make a nice bench at the parking lot. Um, but thank you I, for affording my daughter that opportunity because when I got off the phone with the new principal, I gave her the biggest hug and she actually felt like she made a difference. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Are there any further speakers wishing to address city council? Seeing none, just a few comments. I want to clarify that um, Councilman Lavelle, I don't know if you want to mention this, but your office is meeting with the ownership of the um, high rise and with, uh, and you've already had councilman, or you already had uh, controller or city, or city council uh, solicitor and our manager, uh, Ricky Moody, up there to, to um, provide some help. Zone two's already been increased. Uh, their awareness, their uh, presence up there, but there's a, a meeting coming up, correct, with your office. Okay, I just want to make sure that that's clear and that Councilman Burgess was instrumental also in making sure we hired these people and that he's also had them into his district as well. And that there are several meetings that I'll announce uh, for public engagement and community engagement at the end of the meeting for the safe neighborhoods, welcoming uh, communities and thriving people. And that's from the Mayor, Mayor Ganey's office, budget office. So I'll announce those after, at the end of announcements. Okay, with that said, it's now our next order of business, which will be the presentation of papers. Uh, Councilman Burgess, Chair of Urban Recreation. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Coghill, Chair of Public Works. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents Bill Number 811, resolution authorizing the Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh and the Director of the Department of Public Works to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Tourism Fund for the construction of the Homewood Park Community Gathering Space in the amount of $500,000 for this stated purpose. Bill Number 812, resolution granting unto Penley Park South Inc. their successors mm. and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a new ADA compliant ramp with handrails on both sides at 5700 Penn Avenue in the 8th Ward, 9th Council District, and Bill Number 813, resolution authorizing the mayor of the City of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Tourism Fund for the East Liberty Mobility Plan in the amount of $500,000 for this stated purpose. Thank you, and Councilwoman Gross, Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Madam President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 814, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for 937 Liberty Avenue. Bill number 815, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director. Okay, sorry. We'll move that under public safety next. Go ahead, continue, Madam Clerk, please. Councilman Krause. I'm sorry, yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, Councilman Krause. I, now I get what happened, okay. Councilman Krause presents Bill 815, <coughs> resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of public safety to enter into an agreement or agreements with the Federal Emergency Management Agency for the purpose of receiving and spending grant funds in the amount of $280,000 with a local match of $28,000 for the purchase of fire attack package, packages, hose and nozzles to replace all of the frontline attack package, packages for the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire. Madam wow. President, 
may I, um, if I may please? Uh, yeah. Since this, once again, is an application to receive grant funding to replace the hoses and nozzles, may I offer up a motion to waive the rules so that we may have this on tomorrow's well, standing Is there an emergency? Them? I mean, I think that if it's an Only emergency or important, then. But Only that, madam, if you'll respect my committee, please, I'd like to put it up for a vote. And it's just that we're receiving, we're just putting, we're just receiving grant funds is what we're doing. And so it's uh, the idea of expediting it, I think is, okay. is a good idea. So motion. motion There's a motion. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Madam President. We'll be on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. And I, well, we'll have a conversation after this. And Councilman Laval, um, Committee on Finance and Law. Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Laval presents Bill Number 816, <coughs> resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Primary Aim LLC doing business as Wendy's in the amount of seven thousand fifty-three dollars and eighty cents in settlement of a claim for damage to the overhang canopy at the Wendy's drive through located at 2410 West Liberty Avenue from a city EMS vehicle. Thank you. And Councilwoman Strasburger, Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilwoman. No new papers, Madam President. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. And Councilwoman Strasburger, Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you, Councilwoman. And Councilman Wilson, Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Wilson presents Bill Number 817, Ordinance Amending the Pittsburgh Code, Title IX, Zoning, Article 1, Section 902.03, Zoning Map, by changing from LN, Local Neighborhood Commercial, to UI, Urban Industrial, three parcels in the Allegheny County Block and Lot System, 12th Ward. Bill Number 818, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of City Planning to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Carbon Disclosure Projects Climate Resiliency Funds for development of project plans and funding strategies for resiliency hubs in the amount of $25,000 and authorizing expenditures for this stated purpose. Bill number 819, ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code, Title IX, Zoning, Article 4, Planning Districts, Chapter 910, downtown districts to update review and approval processes. And bill number 820, ordinance accepting a new street name, Banksville Park Drive in the 20th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. The following street name was approved by CPAC in September 2022. The name listed in this ordinance shall be made official in accordance with the Pittsburgh Code, Title IV, Public Places and Property, Chapter 420, Uniform Street Naming and Addressing, and Bill Number 821, Ordinance Accepting a New Street Name, Shelter House Road in the 11th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. The following street name was approved by CPAC in September 2022. The name listed in this ordinance shall be made official in accordance with the Pittsburgh Code, Title IV, Public Places and Property, Chapter 420, Uniform Street Naming and Addressing. Thank you. And myself, Chair of yeah, Hearings. Some new Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Council President Kel Smith presents Bill Number 822, communication from Jake Pollock, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approval on behalf of the Department of Innovation and Performance for Catherine Grober, per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Bill number 823, communication from City Controller Michael Lamb, submitting a performance audit of the Department of Public Safety, Bureau of Administration, School Crossing Guards, dated October 2022. And bill number 824, communication from Jake Pollack, 
Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting a $1,000 donation from Ann Cahoot to the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police Mounted Unit Fund. Thank you. Can I have a motion to read, receive, and file? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And our four appointments, Madam Clerk. Bill number 825, <clears throat> excuse me. Resolution appointing Angela Martinez to serve as a member of the Shade Tree Commission for term to expire October 31st, 2026. Bill number 826, resolution appointing Zena Scott as a member of the Pittsburgh Shade Tree <coughs> Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2026. Bill number 827, resolution appointing Karen Garrett to serve as a member of the Housing Opportunity Fund Advisory Board for a term to expire April 30th, 2026. And bill number 828, Resolution appointing Justin Livingston as a member of the Equal Opportunity Review Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2026. Thank you. Um, yes. Does anyone wish to interview members? You're all okay with them, everyone? I'd like to interview for the Housing Opportunity Fund. Thank you. So can we have a motion to hold Bill uh, 827 for interview? We have a motion with... Are you okay with that? I have my microphone on, Madam President. Apologies. We have a motion, we have a second, any discussion? I'll just say that I think that this is really important and timely right now that we should be interviewing and making sure that it's in line with the, um, the agenda of, of, the, of the body. And so motion to, and so do we have all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion's approved, we'll hold that for interview. And the other three appointees? Thank you, we have a motion to approve, do we have a second? second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All appointees are approved. Three appointees are approved. Thank you. And now we'll move on to any unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business before City Council? Seeing none, the next order of business is committee uh, reports to committee for final action. Councilman Lavelle, Committee on Finance and Law. President. Councilman Lavelle presents Bill Number 805, reported a committee on finance and law for October 4th, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 771, resolution further amending Resolution Number 886 of 2021, effective December 27, 2021, entitled "Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2022 Capital Budget and the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program." and the 2022 through 2027 capital improvement program by increasing California Avenue Bridge by $800,000. Thank you, you've heard the reading of the title of the bills. Is there any discussion on the bills? Seeing none, the bills are already for final action. All in favor of the passage, vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Lavelle? Aye. Mrs. Strasburger? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith, President? Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. Now, Councilman Bruce Krause, uh, Committee on Public Safety Services. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Krause presents Committee on Public Safety, Bill Number 806, reported to Committee on Public Safety <coughs> Services for October 4th, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 769, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the public safety to enter into an agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Auto Theft Prevention Authority for the purpose of receiving and spending grant funds in the amount of $566,384. Thank you. You've heard the reading of the title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? 
Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage? Move with aye when the name is called. Those opposed, the vote no. Would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kilsmith, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bills have been received. The legally required number of votes is finally passed. Councilman Anthony Cogill, Committee on Public Works. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents bill number 807, reported a committee on public works for October 4th, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 764, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to apply for grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Keystone Communities Grant Program to provide funding for the construction of a community space and playground in Homewood Park. The grant proposal includes a request of $262,180.50 with the local match of $262,180.50 to come from a City of Pittsburgh capital budget. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement not to exceed $524,361 for this stated purpose. Bill number 766, resolution providing for a reimbursement agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the preliminary design phase of the California Avenue Bridge Project, providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $800,000. This resolution serves to authorize only the reimbursement agreement or agreements at no cost to the City of Pittsburgh. Future resolutions will authorize the project-specific service agreements. Bill number 767. Resolution providing for an amended reimbursement agreement or agreements with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the construction phase of the Allegheny Circle Phase II project and providing for the payment of the cost not to exceed $2,126,495 and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $4,000, a decrease of $4,000 from the previously executed City of Pittsburgh contract 52331-1, as authorized by Resolution 374 of 2020. Bill number 791, resolution expressly authorizing and recognizing the <coughs> delegation by the mayor on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation's Secretary of Transportation for authority to acquire right of way necessary to complete the Fern Hollow Bridge project as provided in an intergovernmental cooperation agreement authorized by Council Resolution 20 of 2022. Thank you. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills. Is there any discussion on the bills, Councilman? Yes, Madam President, I need to make a motion to amend bill number 764. I understand it's just technical in nature. Second. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Is it in writing? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Second. second. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Amendment? Aye. Just the account number. Amendments are bills are amended, and Madam Clerk, for the final bills. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Kraus. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kilsmith, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bills have been received. The legally required number of votes are finally passed. That moves us on to Councilwoman Erica Strasberger, Committee on Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilperson Erica Strasburger presents Bill Number 808, Report of the Committee on Human Resources for October 4, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 772, Resolution providing that the City of Pittsburgh enter into a professional services agreement and/or contract with Industrial Organizational Solutions Inc. for professional consulting services in connection with police lieutenant and police sergeant position job analysis the development, administration, and scoring of written examinations, and development, assessor selection, administration, and scoring of the oral board examinations, 
and providing for the payment of the cost not to exceed $276,000. Thank you. You've heard the reading of the title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill's none. Seeing none, the bill's not ready for final action. All in favor of the passage, vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Kraus. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. And again, Councilwoman Erica Strasberger, Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you for taking two committees again. Councilperson Erica Strasberger presents Bill Number 809, Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management for October 11, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 770, Resolution authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Safety to enter on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh into a software maintenance agreement or agreements with Lids Online for stolen property tracking software related mm -hmm. maintenance, user support services, and subscription-based licenses to be utilized by the City's Bureau of Police at an overall cost not to exceed $378,839. Thank you. You've heard the reading of the title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of passage, vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kilsmith, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. That moves us on to our last committee of the day, Councilwoman Deborah Gross, Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Deb Gross presents Bill Number 810, reported a committee on intergovernmental affairs for October 4, 2022, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 686, resolution providing for the execution of a cooperation agreement or agreements with the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh for the performance of certain work in connection with the 2022-2023 Community Development Block Grant Program and providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $6,500,000. Thank you. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill's not ready for final action. All in favor of the passage, vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed, will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Killsmith, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. That moves us on to motions and resolutions, and I have a few meeting announcements. Let me get to this. Tomorrow, Wednesday, October 12th at 9 a.m., Council will hold our interviews with appointees to the Housing Opportunity Fund Advisory Board, followed by Council Standing Committee's meeting at 10 a.m. Speaker registration for the Standing Committee's meeting will, will close at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. Also, Wednesday afternoon at 1.30 p.m., Council will hold a Cablecast public hearing on Bill 782 as it relates to the renewal of the Oakland Business Improvement District. Speaker registration will close at 12 noon Wednesday. To register to speak at these meetings, please fill out the sign-up form on the Council meeting webpage by the deadline. You may also call the City Clerk's Office at 412-255-2138, and I also have safe neighborhoods welcoming communities thriving people uh, meetings that mayor ganey is holding it for the budget office in uh, th three separate meetings that so far he has wednesday october 19th at homewood brushton ymca at 7 p.m on bennett street he has saturday october 22nd west end health of active living center at 80 wabash street at 2 p.m on a saturday and sunday at Ebenezer Baptist Church on Wally Avenue at 2 p.m. So for those who want some public involvement, there's plenty of opportunity to speak about the budget. Um, 
Is there anything from the members? Yeah, I'm sure they, they said this was the beginning of their, of yeah, their schedule. Yeah, it's just the beginning. I just wanted to yeah. make sure. Yeah, Thank you, ma'am. And then we'll have our own meetings as well. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything else from members? Can I have a motion to excuse the absent member, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting? I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you.